Hi, you guys. The Sew Together pattern for September is the Sinclair Daisy Top. Sew Together is a little sewing challenge I am hosting on Instagram. All of my Instagram followers voted on the Daisy Top from a group of four other or three other woven top patterns. So in today's video, I'm gonna be sharing with you all the information you need in order to make the Sinclair Daisy, including just information about the pattern, some pattern hack suggestions, fabric recommendations, and a list of notions that you will need to make this cute little top. Before we jump into it, like this video so that others will see it, subscribe, and if you want, click the no notification bell so that you will get notified every single time I post another sewing video. If you're new here, I'm Lindsay, welcome. I make all my own clothes and I love sharing my pretty much obsession of sewing with everyone on this YouTube channel. All right, so the Sinclair Daisy, let's get into it. All right, so the website describes this as semi-fitted at the shoulders, chest and bust, and then relaxed at the waist and hips. It has two options, one is long sleeves finished with a small pleat and elastic band at the hem or petal sleeves with a, a small pleat on one side. The blouse, either version, is finished with a curved hem. It's easy to make and become a great piece for your wardrobe. I love that Sinclair also includes these techniques to master, which for this pattern include pleats, binding, set-in sleeves, a rolled hem, French seams, and top stitching. So I don't know if they have, they don't have it listed necessarily as beginner, advanced beginner or whatever it is, but based on that list, I would definitely say confident beginner up to advanced. But if you're a beginner sewist, this is how I was able to learn how to sew so quickly. I took on patterns that I knew were outside of my skill set, but I used them as an opportunity to learn and grow. So as I would come to different parts of the sewing instructions, like for example, the binding, if I didn't have had never done binding before, I would search in YouTube and Google blogs and get all the tutorials I needed to learn how to do binding would accomplish that and then move on to the next one. This one just happens to have quite a few of those that if you're new to sewing garments, you might be doing a lot of watching tutorials <laughs> before you finish this little top, but it can be done. Um, another really great thing about Sinclair pattern specifically is that the pattern comes in regular petite and tall. So if you normally have to make length adjustments because you're, you have a short torso or whatever it is, this is going to have, this is going to take care of that for you and you don't have to do any pattern adjustments, which is so nice. Um, it also comes in sizes extra small to extra large with six cup sizes, A up to triple D. So it's really inclusive in that way that it has you know, height um, inclusivity, uh, width inclusivity, and bust cup inclusivity as well. She really has thought of, of everything. So, so here is the size guide. If looking at this is a little bit like <laughs> reading another language, I've got the thing for you. It is my fast fit workbook. You guys, this is what I use every single time I sew a new pattern. You take your measurements, you take the size chart measurements, you take the finished garment measurements, and you kind of compare them all to each other with simple, easy to do like math. And at the end, it spits out what size you should make in your bust, your waist, and your hip. Obviously, if you need to be grading, um, if you need to make any pattern adjustments, you know, you can figure that out as well. It truly is like, I don't sew without it. So be sure to check the description box if you want to grab the Fast Fit Workbook from my website. All right, so I know that I have not made this pattern yet, but one other thing I did want to address is the handling of getting your pattern printed. So the way that the large format file is set up is because there's so many bust cups, the way that the large format file is formatted is like multiple front pattern pieces. And so everybody gets the same back, but then there's all these different fronts. And so the front you need may not be on the same sheet of large format paper um, as the back. In fact, there's only one that's on the same page as the back. I think that that's the triple D, but I could be wrong. So even though you will never, like someone who is a like B or C, like me, I'll never need the double D version. You can't really get it printed without including that. 
That said, something really cool about Sublime Graphics, which is where I get all of my indie patterns printed. I've talked to you guys about them before. I have a coupon code ITH Sublime 25 and it gets you 25% off your entire order. But something really cool about them that's different than every other large format printer I've ever used is that it's just a flat rate. No matter how many pages are in the pattern, that's it just costs the same no matter what. Another thing that they do is if you just want um, one size printed or a few sizes printed, you can tell them what sizes you want and they will just print those sizes for you. So if like, a big, again, because this one has so many different sizes, XS to 2XL, because if you know you're on the smaller range of the, of the sizes, there's no need to print large 1X, 2X, you know, and, and vice versa. Um, so they'll do that for you for no charge either. And another thing that I really love is when patterns are color coded. So Sinclair uses color patterns and each of the sizes is a different color. Um, Sublime Graphics prints in color also at no additional charge. So I know that it is a little bit more expensive to get your patterns printed for you. Um, and you have to pay for the shipping and all of that kind of stuff. But you do get a lot of benefits buying from Sublime Graphics than you would either getting it done at your local architectural engineer print place. Um, they're going to charge you per sheet and they're going to charge you to do color. And no one prints on tissue paper, which is what Sublime Graphics does. This is their tissue paper here. All that to say, if you're going to have it printed in a large format printer, this pattern, I mean, I recommend it for all patterns, but this pattern specifically, I recommend um, Sublime Graphics because there's no upcharge for multiple sheets. There's no upcharge for color and you can get it printed on the tissue paper, which is really nice when you're working with lightweight drapey fabrics because that copy shop paper is so much heavier than the fabric is. It's really difficult to move it around without like catching the fabric. Do you know what I mean? Like the little corners of the paper catch the fabric and moves up. Everything is so shifty and hard to work with already. You don't need to be adding to the stress of doing that. So that's why I really like their tissue paper. But yeah, check the description box. I have a link to Sublime Graphics because they have a funky spelling of their name. And also the coupon code is reiterated down there. She recommends lightweight woven fabrics with good drape. Now that is a very broad category of fabrics. <laughs> what you need to be looking for, in addition to lightweight woven fabrics with good drape, great description, but not specific enough. So you can go, like for example, if you're shopping at Joanne, Joanne has a whole category of fabrics called like silky types, I think. And in there, you will find a whole bunch of these lightweight woven fabrics with really good drape. So obviously you're looking for something that is literally lightweight. Like you pick it up and it feels lighter weight than relative to like a wool or something, which or denim, which you pick up and you like, you can feel the heft of it. Um, you can also like, you know, like dangle the edge of the fabric that kind of hangs off and you can see the drape there. You can see all the like folds in the fabric. You're looking for something that has a lot of that. And then obviously woven fabrics and not knits. So that's pretty easy to discern. If you're shopping online, you can look for things like um, anything made with rayon is typically going to be drapey, not necessarily lightweight though. So you want to look for um, substrates like chalet, um, rayon poplin would be really good. When you start getting into like rayon twill, that will probably be a little bit too heavyweight. Even though it's made with rayon, the twill weave makes it a little bit heavier weight. And so more intended for like skirts and dresses and things like that. But chalet, poplin would both be really good. You have your cotton options like chambray or cotton voile. Now those are really good in terms of weight, not necessarily as drapey. So try and find a chambray or a wall that has a little bit of rayon or polyester or something blended in. That'll make it a little bit more drapey. Now, now it doesn't have to be like the most drapey fabric ever for this design. The drapier it is, the kind of like, I don't know, the closer it will fall in on your body. Um, the, the blousier, that kind of long sleeve will be, even the flutter sleeve will just kind of fall flatter fall closer and not like the, the the less drapey it is the more that all those things stick out right the more that all those things kind of 
hold their shape and kind of stick away from your body. I am using this fabric here. I've had it in my stash forever. I don't remember where I got it, but it was from a long time ago. Um, the Sew Together 21, I have doubled up my challenge. In addition to making a pattern every month, I also try and use stash fabrics every time. So that's what this is. I'm pretty sure I got it at Joanne. If you guys recognize it, you can let me know in the comment section below. But it is this really nice, um, it is lightweight. It is, I'll show you the drape. It is drapey. Can you see all those folds that are going in it? But I feel like it has like a brushed quality to it rather than a shiny quality to it. And when I went to shop my stash, I have a lot of those like silky types that are like shiny and they, they will come across dressier. Like I don't need to show up like that for any circumstance in my life. I think I have a pretty casual sort of business life. You know, when people meet me online or even in person, they're not expecting me to show up in business attire. So that's why I went for this. I have half a mind, and we'll talk more about hacks here in a second, but I have half a mind to hack this into a dress because I just feel like it will get worn so much more. In thinking about that and possibly hacking it into a dress, it would be very simple to do. All you would do is lengthen this pattern, lengthen your front bodice and your back bodice. You would add in, you could either just leave it like that and make it like a shift dress, super cute. You can even do some fisheye darts in the back if you wanted to add a little bit of shaping to your waist. Um, you could also add in a waist seam with some elastic and have kind of like, an, that's kind of like um, doubling down on the blousiness of everything. You know, you'll have that kind of blousy effect above your waist um and then like a really cute skirt on the bottom notions wise you're gonna need some fusible iron-on interfacing preferably woven if you're confused about interfacing confused about what that means check this link here this is my interfacing 101 video where it goes through all the different types and kind of explains woven versus non-woven and different weights and all that kind of stuff so um she's saying preferably woven i would also say preferably a lightweight sheer weight something along those lines polyester thread i don't recommend cotton thread um and garment sewing so polyester thread and then matching serger threads if you are going to be surging your seams however as she explained there is um instructions on doing the french seams which is really beautiful if you have like a chalet if you have something really lightweight like even more lightweight than what i'm using french seams are really really nice so easy to do you guys can do them it just takes a little bit of time a little bit of focus but you can definitely do it all right so lots of information about the daisy top i hope that this more inspired you to make it rather than scared you away from making it. Um, I cannot wait to see your versions again. Like this video so other people can find it. Subscribe and click the notification bell. That is going to do it for me today, y'all. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you all very soon. Bye!